Section 3.1 deals with a constant E and continuous compounded interest. Now, E is just a number. E is approximately 2.71. So that's the approximation of the number knee. But it's just like pi, which is approximately 3.14. It's just a naturally occurring number. Now, we define the number E to be the following. It's equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the nth power. So what that means is that if you take 1 plus 1 over n raising it to the nth power and you get n's that are going towards infinity, so n's that are getting larger and larger, they're approaching this number 2.71. Another definition for the number e is e is equal to the limit as s goes to 0 of 1 plus s raised to the 1 over s. Now the reason that we can say that is if we let s equal 1 over n, so this 1 over n here becomes s, well we know the way that limits work as n goes to infinity, 1 over n is going to go to 0 because that's just that theorem that we know of. So as s goes to 0, this 1 plus s raised to the 1 over s is going to equal e. So now, before we get into continuously compound interest, let's recall how to solve an exponential equation. So an exponential equation basically just means that you have an equation where the variable is in the exponent location. So here the variable is in the exponent location, and here the variable is in the exponent location. So when you're trying to solve an exponential equation, what you want to do is you first want to start by isolating the base. So you get whatever is being raised to a power all by itself. Then you take the natural log of both sides of the equation, and that's going to cause the variable to pop out of that exponent position, and we use the power to product law of logarithms to do that. And then we get to solve for the variable. So let's look at examples one and two that are asking us to solve for t or r, and to round to two decimal places. Let's start with number one. We have four is equal to e raised to the 0 0.012 t. The first thing I need to do is isolate the base. Well, what am I raising to a power? I'm raising e to a power. Is e all alone on one side of the equal sign? It sure is. I'm not multiplying it by anything, dividing it by anything, adding or subtracting it by anything. So it's isolated. So step two then says that what I need to do is take the natural log of both sides. So I need to take the natural log of the left and the natural log of the right. So we have the natural log of 4 equals the natural log of e raised to the 0.012t. Well, the natural log of 4 just stays as it is, but here on the right-hand side, the natural log and e cancel, and this power becomes a product that we multiply that from, but since that canceled and it became 1, we're just left with 0.012t. Solving for t by dividing both sides by 0 0.012. We know that t is going to equal the natural log of 4 over 0 0.012. And grab a calculator. The natural log of 4 divided by 0 0.012, and we get to two decimal places, 115.52. So this is approximately 115.52. Example 2, more of the same. Solve the exponential equation. So the first thing I need to do is isolate the base. So what am I raising to a power? I'm raising e to a power. I'm raising e to the ar. Well, is e all alone on one side of the equal sign? It is not. It is being multiplied by 3. So I need to start off by dividing both sides by 3. And I end up with 3 is equal to e raised to the 8r. Well, now my base is isolated. This is all by itself. So I take the natural log of both sides to solve this. So the natural log of the left and the natural log of the right. So I get the natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of e raised to the 8r. So the natural log of 3 just stays as is. Here natural log and e cancels. This goes and multiplies to the front. So the natural log of 3 is equal to 8r. Divide both sides by 8 to solve for r and r is going to be whatever the natural log of 3 over 8 is. So let's grab a calculator and find that out. So the natural log of 3 divided by 8 is equal to, to two decimal places, 0 0.14. So it's approximately 0 0.14.
Let's define simple interest, compound interest, and continuous compound interest before we get to any examples. So simple interest is defined as follows. If you have principal P borrowed at an annual rate of R, then after T years, the borrower is going to owe A equals P times 1 plus R times T. Compounded interest, so if you're compounding your interest M times a year, so 1 time a year, 2 times a year, 12 times a year, whatever that is, we use this compounded interest formula. And what that is, is A is equal to P times 1 plus R over M raised to the M times T. Finally, if we're compounding our interest continuously, if we have continuously compounded interest, then we use the continuously compounded interest formula, which is A equals PE raised to the RT. Now, for every single one of these problems, A is always going to be the amount at the end, amount after T years. P is always going to be that principal amount, how much you start borrowing or how much you invest. R is always going to be your rate and you're always going to have to express it as a decimal. T is always going to be your time. And then for this one here, M, M is always going to be the number of times a year you are compounded. In most of the cases, it'll tell us if we're compounding continuously or compounded a certain number of times a year. But we'll notice that A is always going to be the amount after T years, P is always going to be your principal amount, and R is always going to be your rate, and T is always going to be your time. So let's look at an example of this. We have solved the following. It says a bank offers a three-year CD that earns 1.64% compounded continuously. A, if $10,000 is invested in the CD, how much will it be worth in three years? And B, how long will it take for the account to be worth $11,000? Okay, so we start off noticing that it said compounded continuously, so we know we're gonna use the formula A is equal to PE raised to the RT. In order to use this formula, I need to figure out what I'm looking for and what given information I have. Well, I'm told that the CD earns 1.64%, so I automatically know that my rate is 1.64%. Again, I need this as a decimal, so I'm just moving the decimal places over twice to the left. So R is really just 0 0.0164. Now, part A is telling me that I'm putting down my initial amount is invested, so that means P is equal to $10,000. And it's saying, how much will it be worth? Well, that's A, how much are you gonna have in the end if you're looking at your time to be three years? So just plugging into our formula, A is equal to PE raised to the RT. A is what I'm looking for. P is $10,000. E, R is 0 0.0164, and T is three. Now this is not an exponential equation because 0 0.0164 and 3, there's no variable there. This is not an exponential equation. We're solving for A, which means that all we have to do is plug what's on the right into a calculator and we'll find our answer. So grab our calculator and plug this in. So we have 10,000 times E raised to the 0 0.0164 times 3. And we end up with $10,504.30. So A is going to equal $10,504.30. So the amount that's going to be available in this CD after three years should be $10,504.30. Part B is saying how long is it going to take us? So how long, that means what's your time? How long will it take the account to be worth $11,000? Well, that's A. It says, okay, we want it to be worth $11,000. How long is that going to take? So again, our formula is the same. A is equal to PE raised to the RT. Well, now I know that A in this case is going to be 11,000. 
My P, my initial principal amount, is still 10,000. My rate is still 0 0.0164, and my time is what I'm looking for. Now this is an exponential equation, because notice the variable is in the exponent location. So to solve this, I first need to isolate my base. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10,000. And I get 1.1 is equal to e raised to the 0.0164t. Now, what I had to do if I look back at examples 1 and 2 is take the natural log of both sides to solve this. So I'm going to take the natural log of the left and the natural log of the right. So we have the natural log of 1.1 is equal to the natural log of e raised to the 0.0164t. So I have the natural log of 1.1 is equal to, remember this cancels, and this power gets multiplied to this, and it's just going to be 0.0164t. Solving for t by dividing by 0.0164. So t is going to be whatever the natural log of 1.1 divided by 0.0164 is, and let's grab a calculator to figure that out. So we have the natural log of 1.1 divided by 0 0.0164. Hit enter, and that's approximately to two decimal places, 5.81 years. So it's going to take about 5.81 years for us to have $11,000 in this CD.